recording it won't there we go <laughs> no yeah it didn't do it at first <laughs> it's just supposed to uh let's love uh, let's look at james 4 here um, chapter one from whence come wars and fightings among you come they not hence even of your lust that war in your members you lust and have not you kill and desire to have and cannot obtain you fight in war yet you have not because you ask not you ask and receive not because you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your lusts you adulterers and adulteresses know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with god whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of god do you think that the scripture saith in vain the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy <clears throat> i want to stop there for a minute at verse five one through five first, and we're going to break it down that way, Jimmy. Because um, I want to really break this down. And a lot of people will misread this and not understand what it is because it's very strong. And what he's saying here is, where do these wars, these wars and fightings come from among you? <clears throat> Don't they come from the lust of the flesh? <clears throat> Have you noticed that in the world where people are just sitting there constantly bickering? <coughs> Not happy, fighting. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Yeah. And, and this is what he's saying, but why does he put in here, you ask and receive not because you ask amiss? That's the question I want your guys' input on. <coughs> What does he mean by that? By what? Because you ask amiss. See, a lot of people don't see that. Because we're asking for the wrong things. Yep. Exactly. Do you see what she just wrote? Your heart's in the wrong place. Exactly. See, that's the point I'm getting at. <clears throat> exactly. You're asking it for the wrong things. So. You know, you've heard me say it probably a thousand times on Twitter, Jimmy, and I'm probably beating a dead fish here. But <laughs> I always say, where is your heart aligned with? Is it aligned with truth or aligned with the world? And that's where we have to, when we pray, we are supposed to come to God with a pure, humble heart, correct? Yes. <laughs> but how many people have prayed with pride in their heart and it backfires on them? <clears throat> and this is why, because he says it right there that you may consume it upon your lusts. <laughs> Makes sense, don't it? It's exactly what we were saying is that we are consuming it upon what we want and not what God would have for us. There's an old, old story. And I want to share this with you guys because it was cool. Because a man went to heaven and he's walking down the main street, this main street of gold along the Crystal Sea. He looks over to the left and here's a bunch of old looking dilapidated warehouses. And God and St. Peter and God are walking alongside him and Jesus. And he's like, what are those buildings there, Lord? And he goes, those old buildings, well, those are the ungranted blessings. We don't want you going over there. We don't want you going over there because it'll break your heart. <clears throat> well, as the guy got done with the tour, he starts walking around and he, the curiosity got the best of him. And he decided to sneak in and he started seeing all these names and he found one, a whole shelf dedicated to him with his name on it. And he starts looking through it and Here's a beautiful home, a beautiful wife, beautiful family, not needing to care in the world. And St. Peter found him and he goes, what are you doing in here? I told you not to go in here. He goes, well, I couldn't resist, St. Peter. I couldn't resist. I had to come in here. But none of this ever happened in my life. He says, because, child, you never asked God for these blessings. These are the blessings you didn't ask for. You asked for other things. And God gave them to you. And you struggled through life because you didn't ask what you truly needed. And that's where this scripture comes in real powerful to me <clears throat> on that. Is asking amiss. What, it's taking an assessment. 
and I might be overreaching here, but taking an assessment of what your needs are. And that's what he's doing right here in these first four, first five verses. Is what you're asking for from God and how you're living aligning with God versus the world. Wouldn't you say that's about accurate? <laughs> yeah. Think of the mentality. Do you really need that or do you really want that? Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> The need, the need. My wife is sitting right here with us and she's studying, Jimmy. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and look here even further. As we continue here, let's go ahead and go to verse six. But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. <laughs> Submit yourselves therefore to God. And Serenity, you and I talked about this the other night. <clears throat> and that's the most I'm going to go into it is submit yourselves, therefore, to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. You know, <clears throat> I've even shared this one on our main page over in Twitter. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. And that's just confirmation of what we just talked about. Submitting ourselves to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. Draw nigh or draw near. A lot of people don't understand the word nigh, which means near. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse ye your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. I, I talked about it earlier today, Jimmy, where you get one toe in the world and one toe in the, in the word. <clears throat> this is what he means by double-minded. How far, how are, how are you going to, if you say you're Christian, how are you going to keep that toe dipped in the world? It doesn't work, does it? No. <laughs> I love that scripture for that reason. But then we look at verse nine. Now, verse nine is very strong and hard to understand verse standing alone. <clears throat> what does he mean by be afflicted and mourn and weep? Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. This is where a lot of people don't understand this. But right there, serenity, exactly. True repentance. Amen. Amen on that one. Right there. It's true repentance. Because even in your righteousness, or what you in, interpret as being righteous, you can't go to God and say, look at what I'm doing, God. Look at me, 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 me. It's not about you. It's about God and your service to God. <clears throat> it's, it's being so humble. Lord, I want to be your vessel. Lord, I'm crying out a dirty, yet sit a dirty sinner under your grace, O oh Lord. I don't want to be boastful, Lord. I don't want to be, what's that word? Proud, O oh Lord. I want to be what you've called me to be. I want you to forgive me for my errors. That's what true repentance is. It is, is humbling yourself to a point where you can be crying in front of God and your heart is stricken, even for the sins that you see around you. That's what it means to be afflicted. Not only for your own sins, but for the sins you see around you. And I know, Jimmy, you've seen this yourself in the world. And I know Serenity has seen it too. <clears throat> this is what he means. And then you look at 10 and it says, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. So where's our joy? It's in the Lord. <clears throat> but then we get to these two verses, these last two verses, Jimmy, and these are really powerful. And I want you to look at them on uh, verse 11 and 12. And a lot of people will take this the wrong way and mistranslate this. And that's why I want to teach you about it. And then we will, if we've got time, we've got plenty of time still. I'm going to go into the next section there below. Speak not evil one of another, brethren. He that speaketh evil of his brother and judgeth his brother speaketh evil of the law and judgeth the law. 
But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is one lawgiver who is able to save and to destroy. Who art thou that judgest another? So a lot of people will take this as, well, that means you can't tell anybody that they're a dirty sinner. Quite the contrary. <laughs> That's not what this is saying. And a lot of people will misconstrue this and justify this judge not lest we be judged mentality. We don't judge no one as a Christian, right, Jimmy? Yeah. We don't. The word judges you, correct? And, yes. who, and who is the word? Jesus. Jesus. God himself, yep. So that's the lawgiver. So when we tell somebody they're in error, we don't do it out of our own pride-filled heart. We do it with scripture, correct? Yes. Yeah, we let the word convict them. That's what he's talking about here is that self-righteous attitude where we, oh, you're wrong. And I'm telling you, you're wrong. It's, it's not about us telling them. It's about allowing the word, sharing the scripture with them to show them refutation. And a lot of people don't understand that word refutation. <laughs> How about rebuke? That's another easier word to understand. We don't rebuke them with our own mouth, but with the word of God. And not with our own heart, but allow the heart of God to come through the word. Does that make sense? Yeah. <clears throat> but then I'm going to ask this question. I'm going to ask this question. How many refutations are you supposed to give them before you shake the dust? And a lot of people don't understand this one either, that there is a limit of how much refutation you give. No, sister. <laughs> a lot of people think it's more, but it's actually three. Well, I know the church has a way it's set up in the church. Yeah, it's three reputations with a witness. So mm -hmm. when you spot an error, bring a brother or a sister in with you. Somebody that you know understands and has the word of God in their heart as well. Okay. And then you bring them along and you say, well, let me share the scripture and show you where your error lies in this doctrine. And if they keep refusing that doctrine three times, then you shake the dust and mark them for causing division. <clears throat> well, that will be one of our studies soon, Jimmy, is I'll be teaching on that, how to mark those that bring division. Definitely want to share that with you guys. But let's look at this next section here. It's the last four verses. <clears throat> go to now, ye that say, today or tomorrow we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. Whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth. For that ye ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. But now ye rejoice in your boastings, all such rejoicing is evil. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. <clears throat> we talk about, remember I said, lest I boast, I'll be here tomorrow. <laughs> I've said that a few times, Jimmy. But that's why I say it is because I know not what God's got planned for me tomorrow nor does anyone else. And that's exactly what he's saying. If the Lord willing, we will return tomorrow. Amen. <laughs> and it's because we don't know what God has truly planned for us. Even though it's predestined, we still don't know until tomorrow comes. And that's why he says boast not. But let me go ahead and grab something real quick. I'm trying to remember where that is. Let's see here. I know it's in First Timothy. And I believe it's chapter four. Nope, it's not. Let me. I know it's in one. It's uh, right here. Nope. <laughs> it's been it's been a while since I've been into it, Jimmy. So that's why I'm looking for it. Right here. I believe it's in here. Let's go ahead and do this. Okay, that's about widows and elders. <clears throat> 
See right here. See here in 520 of 1 Timothy. Them that stand rebuke before all that others also may fear. So that's one part of it. A lot of people don't see that. But I'm going to I'm trying to find the right scripture. That's all scripture. I know it's here in 1st or 2nd Timothy. I'm just trying to locate it. Okay. It might even be in a different book altogether because, like I said, I've got so much in my head. This is about false teachers and true contentment. Just bear with me a moment. <laughs> There's so much that's in my head, brother, that I'm trying to do, trying to find located here. What are you looking for? Yeah, let's see here. Well, that one I was telling you about where it tells about how to deal with rebuke. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's why I'm trying to find it here. That's the principles for marriage in 1 Corinthians 7. If I have to, I'll go right here. I'll do a Google search because I know it's in my head, but I can't find it on the book. Forgive me. I'm just going to grab it real quick because it's going to be easier for me to grab it. Reprove and view. Yeah, I just got to look for it here because I got a little delayed here. I apologize. That's fine. God has a way. It is 2 Timothy 4 too. Okay. That's what he does say. So let me go back to 2 Timothy 4. And I'm going to see if that is true. No, that's rebuke, exhort with all long suffering. That doesn't give us the standards. See, that's why I said it. if you do this, how to rebuke, it gives you the wrong thing sometimes. <clears throat> I'm going to click back because that's not the right one. But I know 4.2 is part of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But there's actually a part where it says, mark them that cause division. I think that's what I got to do is pull that up. Oh, it's Romans. I was way off. <laughs> I, was, I was way off. Okay, Romans 16. So I was definitely way off here. Let's go to Romans 16. Yeah, now I be marked them which cause division and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. You see how he says mark them? Yeah. Okay. Well, how are you going to know what's godly and what isn't? <clears throat> There is one that actually tells you that those that teach contrary to the doctrine. You know what I mean? That's what I was trying to find, but it's not showing me that one. And that's the one I was looking for. I believe I'm, I was correct when I said it's in Timothy. Because it talks about the qualifications of a deacon. I know we've all seen that. Okay, I'm, I'm just scrolling through quick because I think we need to talk about that. Hmm. I believe it's under rebuke, not an elder. So that's what I'm looking for. I thought you passed it. I, I saw have. something elder when you, I didn't see where it was. It says elder, but I didn't catch what was around it. Yeah, that would be this one here. I'm just trying to find it again. Hey, if, this, if a man desire, the bishop must be then blameless. It might be even in here. The mystery of godliness. It's Timothy, which 
go up. Yeah, I'm in. I'm in Timothy. Which chapter? I think it was up. <clears throat> if you scroll up, I think it was up a little bit. I saw Deacon, but it said something around it. Yeah, that's what, is that what you're looking for? It's similar. Like I said, bear with me, guys. <laughs> right here, qualifications for deacons. Okay. Yeah. Moreover, he must have a good report. See, these are the qualifications for pastors, deacons, and the mystery of godliness. And I thought it was in there too, but there's actually one that tells you how to approach them. If I have to, I'll go over to my hardbound because I guarantee I have it marked. And it's probably, like I said, in a different book altogether. When your Bible's all tore apart like this one is serenity. <laughs> this is what happens when you got so much scripture in your mind. Jimmy. My problem, I know scripture, sometimes I just can't remember the verse. I can say the Bible, but I have to look it up on Google sometimes to know what scripture it is. It's actually Titus. Titus, okay. Yeah, I believe it's Titus chapter two. <clears throat> it's the same for her as well, Jimmy. <clears throat> it's, I do add it all in my head. And sometimes I get, yeah, here it is. Here it is. It's got to be here in Titus. Yep, right here. It's Titus 3. Okay. I was way off. I knew it was a T. I, I had it <laughs> as a T, but I was way off. And I'll admit I'm way off. <laughs> okay. That's why they call it Bible study. Yeah, we got about nine minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and read this. Amen. It's so we can all study to show ourselves <laughs> approved together. Amen, amen. But I want to go ahead and read this here. Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work. To speak evil of no man. Remember, we just talked about that in James, about speaking yeah. evil of not evil of your brother, to be no brawler, but <laughs> gentle, showing all meekness unto men. For we ourselves are all, also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceiving, serving diverse lusts and pleasures. This is confirmation to James. And that's what's crazy about this. Mm -hmm. Living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after that, the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. So you see today, the Holy Ghost is renewed in us. Every day we have to look at it as a new day and a new day of the washing of the Holy Spirit. That's what he means by that, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. That being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Ooh, that one's powerful. This is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto all men, unto men. But avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable in vain. That's the ones that want to debate the word constantly and keep refusing to listen to the word of God and change what it means. That's what he's talking about, about vain babblings. Okay. And, and vain genealogies. Well, we don't know when Christ, remember I was saying that it's not as important to know when he was born, but what he did. I remember I said that to that one young person before I had to boot him. Mm -hmm. A man that is an heretic. Here we go with the refutation. After the first and second admonition, reject. See, there's the third time you boot him out, knowing that he that is such is subverted and sinneth being condemned of himself. That's why I warn people of that, Jimmy, all the time. And that's why you see the block button going into effect. And I say, I block this person because of their refutation of God. <clears throat> but that's why I don't go into these deep debates on, does it really mean this? Does it really mean that? The Bible is very clear and concise what it means when we truly seek God's word in it. But you will have people claim, well, it was written by men. There's got to be error. 
how is there any error in that scripture, Jimmy, when it's the living word of God? Yes, it was written by hand of man, but it was the inspired written word of God. God's own words were breathed into it. And that's why he means in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Yes, man wrote it, but why did he write it? Exactly. By the Holy Spirit. Exactly, sister. <clears throat> and a lot of people don't catch that. But now does James chapter four make a lot more sense, Jimmy? Yeah. A lot of people don't understand how to parallel them without the all concordance to help you parallel them. But scripture will go back. If we went back into Jeremiah, it even confirms, if you love me, keep my commandments, right? Yeah. Wouldn't this yeah. confirm that? If you love me, you would keep my commandments? Yeah. Ooh, that's amazing how they connect, isn't it? That's what I want people to see is the love of God and the love of the word of God and how to interpret it properly. If there's a question, I want to leave that up for guys to ask questions now. Feel free to ask any questions. <clears throat> Do you have any questions, Jimmy? Oh, I see your putty cat. Oh, yeah, she's right here. If they look like twins, I'm serious. <laughs> I know. I know they do. That was cute. I just see her. Probably older. She's older though. Yeah, he he's about seven or eight. We got him as a rescue, and yeah. they told me, "Oh, he's only a year old." As big as he was, he was. Days, man. Yeah, he's he's a spe he's a beautiful cat. But I never. I've heard the one. I didn't hear about how to rebuke a person, but like the church, it says you go to them and then you bring them to the church and then you bring them to the pastor and then if they don't, you, then you boot them out of the church. Well, that's what they mean by the one admonition, the second admonition. Okay. I just didn't know that was for the person. I thought it was within the church it's, that you were doing that. Yeah. Anytime it's in ministry. If okay. They call themselves Christian. And that's a good question, Jimmy. If they are calling themselves Christian and they're not living according to the word of God, they are considered a heretic. Okay. The word they use is heretic or a mocker of God. They're blaspheming God and they're the anti of God. They want to keep their foot in the world. Remember I said one foot in the world, one foot in God. They're on the fence. They're the weekend warrior Christians. These are what we are striving to teach people to come out of that kind of mentality. And we're breaking those traditions of men. <clears throat> I didn't come up with the phrase. It's the phrase that I heard years ago sister and it's what it is it's called weekend warrior christianity and like jimmy said the ones on the fence the ones that claim to be christian but don't want to commit to christ fully because <clears throat> i had to realize the doctrines that i was learning inside the church were false and i didn't know that now because i never grew up with the bible but in the past years especially the past years since i've been reading i have teachers like yourself and a couple other people I trust, they teach me the truth and I know the truth now. So when I see them, it's easy to line up with the word, like who's not right and who's wrong. Praise God. Praise the doctrine, God. My brother Chris said, it's like a counterfeit hundred dollar bill. He said, you don't learn to look what the counterfeits look like. You know, you want to know what the real dollar bill looks like. And then you can see the counterfeits coming up. Exactly. Exactly. And that's the point I'm getting at. Ooh, praise God. I love that one. Yep. But he said that you, if you know what the real dollar bill is, if you know the truth of God, then somebody says, well, this and this. Because even like an NIV, if you break it down from a KJV, it changes the word. One of them says prayer and supplication. The other one just says prayer. So you're not, you don't get the full meaning, prayer or fasting or something. I All think right. I forget what I'm trying to say. You said it perfectly. And then you got the other one that they removed with the NIV which is Jesus wept, John eleven thirty five, 35. Okay. Which shows Christ's true flesh side. Christ was not only the man of God, the son of God, but is God, but he was also God in the flesh when he was in the form of Jesus Christ. And it shows a physical human side to Christ that is missed when they omit it. 
that's what a lot of people don't realize. And then they change the word yoke, which is what steers an animal, to a noose, which hangs a person. Those kind of false doctrines is what's teaching people wrong, Jimmy. <clears throat> and I didn't know that because a lot of the teachers, the pros they're calling prosperity preachers. Mm -hmm. And then I had Catholicism, so that in itself was wrong, and I didn't oh, know yeah. that. Yeah. And so exactly. now the only ones, honestly, if I'm on there and I'm not denominational anymore, most of the ones I line up with are the Baptists because their doctrines are the ones that are set. They're set yeah. in truth. A lot of the Baptists, like Pastor Wendell and the other ones I've seen, they're, they're teaching the truth and they're Baptists. Not that I'm leaning on Baptists, but it's the word that's true and they happen to be Baptists. Well, that's cling to the word. And that's exactly it, Jimmy. The um, doctrines are true. Uh, yeah, that's why I'm not denominational because... Some of the things I teach is Pentecostal. <clears throat> Some of the things I teach is Baptist. But the word that I want to look at is fundamentalism. Are they teaching the word of God fully? And that's what I seek. Whether they are aligned with Baptist, Protestant, Judaic Christianity, that's why we do this. I definitely, we only got less than a minute remaining. So, but I think we're going to talk about this more next week, Jimmy. I think we need to spend a, an hour, uh, the next one just talking about different things like this, okay? But let us go ahead and bow our heads real quick before this cuts off. Heavenly Father, we just thank you and praise you. We give you the glory, O oh Lord, and the, the, your lessons and your manna is increasing in our life, O oh Lord. We ask you to put a hedge of protection around our brothers and sisters as we part ways tonight, and that you bless them and you nourish them fully in your word, O oh God. We just thank you and praise you tonight in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But um, next week, I think we're going to just do a general biblical discussion.